Hello, developers. If you need to create a front end integration for your headless backend, this is the video for you. Today, we are announcing the release of our integrations boilerplate, which will help kickstart your development in creating a framework agnostic SDK. Being framework agnostic will allow you to meet your customers where they are. If they're tied to a particular framework, you won't have to rewrite all of your logic every time you want to integrate into a new framework. You'll have this SDK as the basis for your development. Let me give you a bird's eye view of what's going on so that you understand the basics of building the integration. Your integration is going to be consumed by some front end framework, whether it be Nuxt.js or Next.js or something else. You will be extending the SDK core with your integration module. That module could be for something like an e-commerce backend, it could be a CMS, it could be a payment module, or anything else so long as you need to consume it in the front end. That will then, in turn, use the middleware to communicate with your headless backend. If you check out the readme, which I'll have linked in the description, up top you'll see the command to create your SDK integration. So we'll run that command. And it will ask us to name it. We'll just go with cool SDK for this example. And then for my playground, I'm going to choose Nuxt. Of course, you can choose Next if you like. And I'm going to go with Yarn for my package manager. Now, we are building a framework agnostic SDK. The reason that we're choosing a framework here is only for a playground so that we can actually see this SDK installed into a real world application from the start. All right, now let's go ahead and open it up in VS Code, and we will go over what the project entails. So firstly, we have a playground application, which is a Nuxt application in this case. And notice a few things. One, the SDK config here. And as you can see, we have linked the local package for our SDK. And also, we do a little bit of boilerplate setup where we set up the URL to our API. So that is a typical Nuxt application and you can do whatever you want with it, of course. One more thing to notice that is important is the methods. And the, this is where methods will be added. If we open up that example method file and we scroll down to the script, we'll see that we are importing the SDK and we are using that to call to our integration. If I remove the last segment here, you can see that I will get code completion for calling that integration. I will add an endpoint really quick. We'll just go with get something that works for me. And you can see it added the get something file here, along with the other files necessary to create the endpoint, which we will go over in a second. So. Whenever you create a new endpoint or change something, you need to run yarn build. And now let's run yarn dev and check out what we have so far. You can see that we have both of our methods on the side here. And then if you forget, the command to create a new endpoint is already listed here. I can go in and I can make a call to my endpoint. And as well as this other endpoint, I can make a call there. Now let's take a look at the project itself and see how we would go about building out our SDK. If I go to the back end here and I go into packages, SDK, you can see I have the source here, which will have my methods listed. And this will be what is imported inside of the Nuxt application or Next or Quick or whatever application is consuming this SDK. And this is where you'll want to make your adjustments to types and to um, annotations and to um, documentation. The API itself is where you will make, also you can have testing here as well, I should mention. There are some example tests already. And if we run yarn test, from the root directory, it will test in both the SDK and the API. So if we open up the API client, we will see inside of the source directory, we'll go to API 
and let's go to that get something endpoint. Right now, all we're doing is returning this string here. But let's say we want it to actually call our API. What might that look like? So let's import Axios to save you a little bit of time from watching me type this in. Let's go ahead and paste a call to a fake API. And then we can go ahead and get rid of this. So we're just making our external call. Of course, you can do that however you like. In this case, we'll keep it simple. So once we build, then we should be able to call this from our front end. And instead of getting back that string, we should be getting back. And there we go. And so you can see now we have the correct information on the front end. And of course, you can see that you can build out things as you go step by step. Now, once you have this SDK, you'll be able to install it into any front end application and then build out the framework specific things for your integration in that framework, but you won't need to duplicate this work. I hope that was enough to get you started. I wish you all the best in building out your integration. Let us know what you're building by tweeting at us at VSF developers on Twitter. And also join our Discord if you need any help or if you want to help others in the community. I will see you in the next one.